Are you a WordPress publisher looking to set up an email newsletter? Well, there are multiple services out there, but personally, I found MailPoet to be a very good option. And that's because it integrates into the WordPress dashboard itself, making it super easy to push newsletters. And today, I'm going to show you a step-by-step -step tutorial to set up this service. Let's begin. For this, we'll need to head over to the WordPress dashboard, go over to plugins, and in the plugin marketplace, search for MailPoet. The option that you need to select is MailPoet newsletters. Let's go ahead, install and activate it. So now that the plugin is installed, let's go ahead and click manage plugin. Go to plugins under MailPoet. You can click on settings to manage this plugin. So once you've hit manage plugin, let's go ahead and begin the setup. So while setting it up, your website name and the email ID that's been used to set up your WordPress account already populates itself. In case there are any changes that you would want to make here, you can go ahead and do just that. And now you'll need to go ahead and connect your MailPoet account. So since I've promised a step-by-step -step tutorial, I'm going to do this from the beginning as well. Click connect MailPoet. It's going to take us to the MailPoet website. Over here, it gives you different options to choose from. You can go for a pro plan. It depends on the amount of newsletters or subscribers that you've built. For me, to start with, I'm gonna go for a free account. Put in the email ID that you would want to use, set up a password for it, accept the terms of condition, and you can go ahead and hit continue. MailPoet also gives you the option to log in using wordpress.com. If you like everything to be integrated with one account itself, you can choose the second option as well. So once you've created an account on MailPoet, it will ask for a confirmation. So for this, you need to go to the email ID that you have created that account with and click the verification link. If confirmed the mail ID, it's asking us a couple of questions. You can fill in your details. Now in case if you already are using another mail service or if you have a list of subscribers that you would want to reach out to, you can check the options accordingly. So if you have a offline list or if you have a list that you've purchased from someone else of potential subscribers, this usually works for businesses. For publishers, it's already always a great idea to get subscribers from your page itself. If you were already using another email newsletter service and you are looking to migrate to MailPoet, you can check this option, which is the subscribe to our newsletter on our website. Now, when it comes to subscribers joining your list, MailPoet gives you a couple of options. If you have a list, you can upload it. So you'll need to check that option accordingly. Since I'm starting out fresh, I would go ahead and say that I have not yet started collecting subscribers. So with the setup done, we have subscribed to the free plan. Let's go ahead and pair it up with WordPress, right? So once we're back to our WordPress dashboard, it asks us for an activation key. Now, after subscribing to the free plan, they've given us the activation key. You can simply copy it and go ahead, paste the activation key and click verify account. So now we have connected MailPoet successfully to our WordPress dashboard. Next step, you can simply click start using MailPoet and it's going to take you wizard where you can either import existing subscribers. So if you have another newsletter or if you've got a list of subscribers from somewhere, you've purchased them, for example, you can upload it at this point. If you haven't, you can go ahead and set up a subscription form. So when it comes to setting up MailPoet, it will ask you to select a sender name and the email ID. Now you can have a custom domain based email ID set up here. So say, for example, if you have say editor at the rate your website.com, you can do that. I haven't set it up yet. So I'm going to use the default email ID here. So in the basics, uh, the sender details is what you can fill up here. So sender name, you can, if you are the editor and it's going on from your name, you can put your name itself over here instead of the website name, because I can put your name from the website name. So that way your subscribers will know where the email is coming from. And when you're putting in the email ID as well, select something that has your domain name that makes it easy for your receivers or your subscribers to relate to where these emails are coming from. As for the other options underneath, you can click subscribe and comments. I would recommend you to check this because this will allow commenters on your website to convert into subscribers and you can select a email newsletter list. I've selected the default one here, go down, select save settings and let's go 
to the next step, which is a sign up confirmation. So what a sign up confirmation does is when a subscriber subscribes to your newsletter, an email is sent to them for them to verify that they in fact have subscribed to the newsletter voluntarily. Now MailPoet requires this confirmation and it's done there by default. Not much changes in this. Now the third tab is send with. So you have two options here primarily. One is the MailPoet sending service and the other is well other. So if you have a third party sender that you would wish to for sending out your email newsletters, you can select other and set up all the details. But since I'm creating this video as a free way of pushing newsletters, I'm going to select the default mail poet sending service. And once this is done, you can go ahead. The next step would be to collect subscribers. For getting new subscribers, you will need to set up a collection form, which means a form where your readers can put in their email IDs and subscribe to your newsletter. So in order to build a form, I would want you to go to your dashboard, scroll down on the list and go to mail poet. And under mail poet, you can go to forms. Now, as you can see, there's no form that's available by default because we've just set it up. You can go ahead and create a new form. Do that by clicking on the new form button. Now, when it comes to acquiring subscribers, there are multiple ways that you can do so. There's the pop-up, which means anytime someone opens up a web page, after a set amount of seconds, a pop-up will show up asking them to subscribe. There are multiple ways of doing it. You can have a welcome subscriber, sign up, there are multiple options that are available. So you can select a form, you can select one when someone's about to exit your website. You can also have a slide in, which means that when someone's consuming your content, a slide in will come in from the right hand side, asking them to subscribe to your newsletter. There are multiple other formats that you can choose from. Now, this depends on what kind of content you have on the site. If you have something that is say primarily content heavy, something like a how-to article or a detailed news piece that you know your readers are reading, a slide-in would work best. A pop-up is something you can set up when for an exit intent. So when someone's about to exit your website and you're making like a last ditch effort to hold on to them, so pop-up works best in those scenarios. So if your website is primarily news and people are coming in from organic sources like Google search, reading up the article and going away. So just when they're about to go away, that pop-up is going to help convert them into subscribers. So we're going to do just that. So let's set up an, a pop-up for our website. We're going to use a newsletter sign up section. You do have the option to customize it, but if your articles are in depth, so if you have uh, deep dives into say the stock market, for example, an analysis piece or an opinion piece on sports, or your website is primarily in deep dives and research articles. So a slide-in is going to be best because it's not going to be intrusive and uh, someone who's reading up the article, if they like it, they're more likely to convert into a subscriber. This is how the default pop-up looks like. You can customize it. So we're going to go ahead and customize it. Vanilla is good if you'd want to start with, but I like to customize it so that it is likely to get a few more subscribers. So based on how often you're going to send emails, you can also tweak your CTA here. You can you can have it every month, every week, every 10 days, whatever you wish for. You can also change the text on the label. So instead of let's keep in touch, there are multiple other options that you can choose from as well. For example, on the right side, uh, you can select what form gets added like what list do these subscribers get added to now i have a newsletter mailing list already you can select that so anyone who subscribes using this pop-up will get added to a, this particular newsletter mailing list you can have multiple lists as well so on your website you can have a slide in for all your detailed articles you can have a slide in and have them uh, get added to a different newsletter Anyone who's exiting, you can add them to a pop-up newsletter list. So that way you can customize the type of content you send it to them. Targeting can be changed. So there's a lot of options in here, but I'm going to select the default mailing list for now. And then once they hit the submit button or the sign me up button in our case, 
this message will go out to them which is check your inbox or spam folder to confirm your subscription you can also customize this saying that uh, you know there's one more step to go a confirmation is all we need or anything of that sort i'm not going to fiddle much with it with mail poet you've got multiple other options to choose from you can change the color change the form placement you can add more tags but for this i am going to leave you to it you can make changes based on the kind of website that you run and stand that you want to have with your subscribers if you would want to be aggressive you can have different images added to on to this so you can make customizations based on what you would want i am pretty much done with it so this is how the preview would look like so now we've created a pop up form for our readers to subscribe to our newsletter now if you would want to make changes to when this pop up appears or how this pop up appears i'll show you how to do that as well you can go back to the pop up we've just created on the right hand side under form placement so in order to customize the settings for the pop up you can hit this tiny gear icon and here you can select what pages you would want to show this pop up on i'll go ahead display it on all pages you can also select which pages you would want to show these pop ups on you can have a different pop up for different pages there are multiple other options as well now you can be very selective about where this pop up appears so you can have this pop up on your news pages only you can have a different pop up to appear in the sports section if you have an entertainment section you can have a completely different slide in that's designed so the options of customizing are really really high here but at the same time you need to be very very sure of what you're doing you don't want to overwhelm your readers you don't want to bombard them with these pop ups very frequently now the delay for this pop up is set up to 15 seconds by default i think it's a decent amount of time i personally don't like bom being bombarded with a pop up the moment i visit a website like someone can you can set it up for 2 seconds 5 seconds i think 15 seconds or even say 30 seconds is good enough but usually what i've seen is someone who's consuming news on your site is going to bounce off sooner so 15 seconds is the sweet spot if it is a very detailed article if you have videos on your page if you have a lot of images on your page people are going to stick on there for longer so you can use a longer time schedule and that also gives them time to consume your content and then make a decision of subscribing so for detailed pieces opinion pieces and in depth reviews and stuff a longer delay is going to land you a sure shot subscriber but if you're doing news and stuff go for a smaller delay i think it'll stick to the 15 second delay you also have the option to set up how often this pop up form is shown by default it's set up to 7 days which means that if i come to your website as a reader i'll be shown a pop up and the next time that i'll be shown the pop up is after a gap of 7 days so if i'm coming to your website almost every day as a reader but i've not subscribed it will show me this pop up once in 7 days so if you have a lot of audience coming to your website and they are not repeat audiences you can set it up to a smaller duration i think 3 days or 3 days is a good one always is something i would not recommend because people will then be bombarded with a pop up every time they visit your website so that's not a good option to do that i would recommend go down to 3 days that's going to work well and the last option is display on exit intent now i've i've already spoken about exit intent in passing but what exit intent would mean is that whenever someone who's going to exit your website so their mouse cursor is moving up towards the cross button on the tab if they are doing that action it is an exit intent and that is when this pop up shows up so this is a good option to enable so when someone is consuming your content and is about to exit this is the last ditch effort i've been talking about this would work well to try and hold on to them you know nudge them to become a subscriber this works well uh, especially in detailed articles only so based on what your setting your form for make those changes accordingly and this is what you should enable especially if you are a news publisher where a lot of traffic comes from google search so i'm going to go ahead hit save and now our first form is set up and a lot of people would be happy that you're done but there's one more step that i always add you can go ahead to the website you will get a pop up after some time based on how you set up so we've set it up on exit intent which would mean that it would first wait for the 15 second time that we've set up and then 
only when we are about to exit the page is going to show that pop up. As you can see, we've got a pop up already In go ahead, put up an email ID. And just like that, we've gained a subscriber and the pop up works. And once the subscribers confirm, as you can see, we've got two email signups already. So all of these subscribers will get added over here. So if you want to check a list of all the people who've subscribed to you, under mail poet in the dashboard, you can click subscribers and you'll get a list of all the subscribers who have subscribed to your website or your email newsletter. With that done, the next step would be sending out an email. To send out an email, you need to go to your WordPress dashboard and under mail poet, go to emails. So go to newsletter and, and click on newsletter and a, a bunch of newsletter templates that you can choose to send to them. The multiple formats here as well. You can create a custom email newsletter as well. So there is an option to import a template that you've already created. You can also automate a couple of emails here. So every time you publish a post, a new an email can be sent to your subscribers informing them the post that you've recently published. You can also type out a fresh newsletter that you would want to do. So for example, if I were to pick a simple text email newsletter, so this would work well for me. So let's go ahead, click select. You can add a custom logo here. By default, MailPoet has kept a placeholder here. You can add your logo here and then draft out the newsletter that you would want to send. So you can customize this the way you like it and you can make a couple of changes here as well. And once it's done, you can click next. You can make all the customizations that you want. Once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and click next. You can send to your subscribers. Now, uh, the mailing list that I've added here, as and when it builds up, you'll get all the subscribers coming to this list. There's other users as well. The one from comments that we checked, that would come up. So you can select the newsletter subscriber list. You can add subject text here. And then once, you've selected your mailing list, you can scroll down and hit send. So that way you will be able to send out your newsletters to all your subscribers on WordPress. All of it without leaving the WordPress dashboard. It's going to be especially useful for editors who are heavily reliant on WordPress and would want to optimize their entire process end to end. I hope this was helpful.